Let's go. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well, man. If you're a Chelsea fan, I imagine you are because Chelsea have just knocked out Manchester United from the FA Cup in the semi final at Wembley. That's right, Frank Lampard has bested the PE teacher when it counts a flawless performance, or at least it should have been had it not been for one little mistake from Callum Hudson Adoy. 3 1 on the night, should have been 3 0. Hell, should have been more for Chelsea. A tactical masterclass? I'm not so sure. Both coaches changed their shapes. Frank Lampard and Chelsea basically prevailed in doing that. Solskjaer retreated to his first team. His old lineup couldn't do anything and Chelsea take home the big fat W. Frank Lampard has led Chelsea to an FA Cup final in his first season at Chelsea. In his second season in management in what are difficult circumstances currently at Chelsea Football Club and you love to see it. We're going to dig in to the match review today. I've had a couple of beers, so excuse me if I'm a little bit overexcited, but I think I'm allowed that considering the circumstances. Um, what am I saying? Oh yeah, you should definitely subscribe to Football Therapy if you're new to the channel and if you want to help me out, brothers and sisters, please do drop a like on this video. That means a lot. Um, yeah, let's go. Alright, so coming into this, you all know the narrative. Chelsea have lost three times this season to Solskjaer's Manchester United. When they played five at the back, counter-attacking football, they did the same to the, to the back. They did the same today. More on that later. My brain's like two sentences ahead of my mouth and I'm just sort of breaking down. But Chelsea with the more professional performance. Goals from Olivier Giroud, uh, Mason Mount, assist David De Gea, and a lovely own goal from Harry Maguire. So poor defence and poor goalkeeping from Manchester United, but there was excellent play from Chelsea throughout. And like I said at the top of the video, Chelsea probably should have had more golazos. So you get a little bit more context of what went down in this game. We're going to open up the analysis screen and present to you the who scored graphic for stats and that. Whoosh whoosh, here we are baby. As you can see, Frank Lampard did go with the free for free formation. Willy Caballero between the sticks, which is fair enough. I thought he actually might come in in this game. The three centre backs consisted of Azpilicueta, of course, in the right centre back position. Chelsea's best centre half of late, Kurt Zuma, played in the middle. And on the left, Antonio Rudiger. Left wing back was, yes, you guessed it, Marcos Alonso. Reese James played right wing back. The midfield consisted of a double pivot of Jorginho and Kovacic, who used to play excellent together. They played pretty good together today. And the front three was completed by Olivier Giroud, Willian, and Mason Mount, interestingly, on the left wing. Obviously, I mean, we all suspected Mason Mount was going to start this game. He was fully rested. He had basically the pressing game to unsettle United, so I actually said that in my prediction. He started, Pulisic wasn't needed, he was rested on the bench. We had substitute appearances from Tammy Abraham, Loftus-Cheek, and rather frustratingly, Callum Hudson-Odoi. Now, I will talk about player performances in just a moment, but I want to reiterate how the goals came and what really went down in this match. Chelsea, even when they didn't have the ball, they were in control in this game. They kept the door completely shut from Manchester United. United carved out little to nothing, and when Chelsea wanted the ball, they kept it. They did a lot of combinations, uh, created a lot of chances, and of course, scored three goals. Even if one was an own goal from Harry Maguire, it was from Antonio Rudiger coming in. I do maintain Chelsea could have had more goals, but they were fortunate, certainly on the second one. The first goal, Olivier Giroud, some superb piece of movement, running in on goal, tabs it in. Uh, people say it's a De Gea error. I'm, I've maybe a little bit of sympathy for him because it was a great, uh, you know, piece of movement from Giroud and it came out quickly. But you know, perhaps an on-form De Gea would save that. Certainly, the second goal from Mason Mount. Now, Mason Mount had an excellent game, so I'm not going to dig him out. But this particular shot just further highlights how perhaps he needs to work on his finishing or how perhaps he's not such a confident finisher at the moment. Who knows, maybe this incidentally will give him more confidence, but that was an absolute howler from Spain's number two. David De Gea. 2-0 up, Chelsea relatively comfortable and sort of cruising a little bit. 
Has a Magaza slabhead. Uh, he, yeah, own goal, bro. Antonio Rudig is running in on it. He take, comes off his boot, Maguire. Maguire was awful in this game. Loads of wayward passes. I know he had a head injury. I don't know if that affected him, but I think the wayward passes actually came before as well. I do need to say Manchester United were a little bit unlucky with everyone getting hit on the head. If it wasn't collisions with by uh, by and I think Zuma, it was Maguire heading his own player, and even Greenwood got a bit of a collision. So a bit unlucky there, but to be honest, Chelsea was so was so good value for this win. Frank Lampard was set up perfectly tactically, and Chelsea absolutely deserved the W here. Whether it's controlling the game with the ball, controlling the game without the ball, good combinations, and essentially keeping Manchester United out. Of course, they did get a goal late doors, but not from open play because Chelsea had their tactics so well drilled for this game. Callum hudson Doy, fresh off the bench, makes a silly challenge in the box and Bruno Fernandes um, converts a penalty. I'm, 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 I'm not going to call them Fernandes for this instance because, you know, we gave them a dumb penalty. They, of course, convert it. It was really silly and clumsy and dumb from hudson Doy, and it's something that a kid would do off the bench that is desperate to impress his coach. Do you know what I mean? So I don't want to judge him too harshly because I think he deserves the fan support to try and get him to, you know, hone and harness his potential, which is very, very high. But this was dumb. And had United scored a goal in the, you know, remaining whatever it was, 10 minutes, um, then Chelsea might have started getting a bit wobbly. Fortunately, that didn't happen and Chelsea were professional throughout. So let's close the analysis screen and talk about some player performances and stuff. Willy Caballero was pretty good, man. I mean, he didn't really have anything to do with note because Manchester United were not that threatening. But, you know, it felt relatively safe with him in goal. I think he came rushing out once as per his trademark, but no real complaints. Marcus Alonso was decent. Um, he did have a chance uh, early doors where he should have scored a header. He had a good chance where, like, uh, basically he gets underneath it and he had plenty of time to get above it and pretty much score. Other than that, he had a really good game, so shout out Marcus Alonso. All three centre-backs were really, really decent. I probably think Kurt Zuma remains to be Chelsea's best centre-back at the moment, or the best performing centre-back. I do like how he wins the ball airily more, and he has no issue with just clearing the ball when he needs to clear the ball, and I'm all about that at the moment, considering Chelsea's defence is bad. So shout out Kurt Zuma, very, very good, as Puliqueta missed a 7 out of 10 every single darn game. And yeah, really good did nothing too negative of note was pretty good in what was an excellent Chelsea performance defensively so all centre halves get a shout out and Reese James man he hit a venomous shot early doors and forced a save out of De Gea granted it was quite central but it was a shot filled with confidence and what followed that gate what followed that shot was a performance full of confidence from Reese James excellent going forward excellent going backwards and excellent combining on, in between so very very good from James Kovacic was a weird one because I was watching him thinking he's having an excellent game and then I saw him do like a succession of mistakes but in terms of just dribbling out of the press and you know not have fe feeling like you're forced to release the ball like some midfielders get the ball they see people pressing them so they release it which is good if they release it quickly they can combine and move forward Kovacic does think about that but what he wants to do is keep the ball and dribble forwards and often he does that, man. If you look at his dribbling metrics, they're insane. And you it takes some stones to do that in the middle of the park, man. It's all very well when you're on the byline or you're a winger and you've got the whole team behind you defending. But in the engine room, in the middle of the park, to carry the ball like that, Kovacic is super good. So he, you know, he deserves massive props from this. Jorginho was pretty good as well. Nothing too exciting. I'm sure if we got a penalty, he probably would have taken it over Willian, maybe. Um, still good enough, you know, no, nothing bad there. Mason Mount, excellent, obviously scored the goal, a bit fortuitous though. His pressing game was immaculate and it was really, really important for the Chelsea win, as it often is. Frank Lampard's best system player is Mason Mount, whether he's pressing from central areas or he was playing out wide today. He was very, very good, never stopped. And yeah, great performance from him, as was the same from Willian. And, you know, no goal today, but excellent defensive work. You could hear Frank Lampard praising him constantly, watching him press and track back. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm not, he shouted some obscenities in, in a positive uh, praise. I don't swear on this channel, so I'm not going to say what he said. But it was pretty funny. He absolutely loved Willian's performance. Giroud with the goal. Giroud got man of the match. He is the best at, in the world at winning aerials and doing targeted knockdowns. There's no one better than Giroud. 
Giroud's a good finisher, he's a good goal scorer, he scores some great goals, he doesn't score loads of goals, but he's good at that. We know he's good at holding up the ball and uh, combining and doing one-twos, give and goes, whatever you want to call them. But in terms of winning the ball and knocking it down to a runner, there's literally no one better in the world than Giroud at that. The 18 million pound man who won, helped Chelsea win an FA Cup, helping Chelsea get to the top four, top scorer in the Europa League, opened the, scored the opener in the final, got us to another final again with his goals. Absolute bargain, Olivier Giroud. What a superb performance. So off the bench, Ruben did a couple of bits, Tammy didn't do much, and of course, Hudson Odoi. The less said about his cameo, the better, but Chelsea have done it, man. They faced Arsenal in the final. Last time we faced Arsenal in the final was only a season ago, and that ended very well indeed. Incredible scenes, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls. Absolutely amazing work from Frank Lampard to reach the FA Cup final in his first season and looking like he could achieve top four. It's a, just a, such an exciting time to be a Chelsea fan and we've got amazing players coming in. Be excited, brothers and sisters, have a drink, feel good, take the mick out of United fans, wind up the PE teacher, all of it. <laughs> what a time to be alive, the first real good thing to happen in 2020. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, this match review, please do drop a like, subscribe if you're new, and of course, comment your thoughts down below. I'll be down there hanging out with you guys, reading them. Um, I don't know what else to say really, I'm just gonna have another drink, put my feet up, enjoy myself, so you enjoy yourselves and enjoy the football, and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.